Michael Lee State and Manchester United. It's definitely going to be one of the biggest transfer stories, I think, for our club this summer. Whether you think we should sign Elise or not, you can let me know in the comments below. But what I'm going to do in this video is run through the full story of Elise to Man United, where the stories began, what's happened this season, the latest from Fabrizio Romano, from David Ornstein, and we can have a conversation around Elise in the comments. Please do drop a like on this video. I'm going to be doing plenty of these across the whole course of the summer for real transfer targets for United, trying to bring you as I said, the full story. I've been doing these for years and I'm going to do it again. Now, with Elise, everybody thought that he was going to be going to Chelsea last summer. They agreed the £35 million release clause, but instead of him joining the 330 other signings that Chelsea made last summer, Crystal Palace got him to agree to a new contract, which was a massive coup for their club. And if you look at how he's played this season, Elise has had a fantastic output. The thing that's hampered his, pr his real progress has been injuries, a hamstring injury that's reoccurred, probably through a bit of mismanagement by the medical team at Crystal Palace, which I think United fans can relate to. Prior to that, he's not exactly been injury prone. But this season, there's been concerns. It hasn't stopped the links with Elise to Man United, because let's be totally honest, what Man United need this summer is a creative winger, somebody whose main purpose it is to create for others. We've already got individual players, Garnacho, Rashford, they're head down players that want to score themselves. We need somebody who's going to feed Hoyland and that's where Elise more than ticks the box. The creative output from this bloke this season has been ridiculous. 99th percentile for goals themselves, 97th percentile for assists, 95th percentile for shot creating actions. You take a look at his chart here, he really is elite. There's no other way to describe it. The output of Elise has been elite, which is impressive, even more so, given the injury problems that he has had. But per 90, he's right up there with the very, very best. In terms of where Man United are with this, this is the latest from Fabrizio Romano. Man United are well informed on the situation. So they are keeping contacts active for Elise, also on player side, but they know that this is not an easy deal. So, so Man United have been in talks with the entourage of Elise. Does that mean it's going to happen? No, but it means that the door has been opened. And one thing to understand about the Elise move by United, it's not something that's new. All right, Our interest in Elise actually goes further back than even Ineos. It remains one of the clubs keen on signing Elise. We keep repeating that since months, so for sure he's a target for Manchester United, for sure he's in the shortlist, for sure he's been approved by the scouting department even before Ineos came in at so that's quite an interesting part. Elise has been on our radar for some time. Not just because he scored two against us at Selhurst Park this season or he scored one against us at Selhurst Park last season. But he's been on our radar for a while. And I've just shown you the creative output of him. Imagine what he could do in a dominant team. Now, we're not exactly a dominant team right now, but we're trying to build one. Now, an extra bit of information here. As I said, this is like the full story of the whole Elise situation right now. His, his, his agent's just been banned for six months. Will that impact any move? Not according to David Ornstein. It's, this is the latest from David Ornstein on the Elise situation. He said the ban his agent has been handed starts in October. So there's nothing there. It doesn't affect it. He said there's been no concrete talks or developments between Crystal Palace or United or any other suitors. So any conversation between United is directly with Elise's entourage right now. With the release clause, this is the interesting one. From everything we hear, it is a complicated mechanism and not as straightforward as pay the fee and get him. So it probably means any sort of negotiations for Elise won't be as straightforward as how much? 50 mil? There you go, Bob. Job's done. It's going to be more difficult than that. And I'll be honest, 50 to 60 million is right at the tip, right at the top, tip top, of how much United are going to pay for any individual this summer. Do you think we should be spending that money on Elise? That's a question you should answer in the comments. Now, an interesting development is that Elise and Tadebo, both of them are not in the Euros, the France squad for the Euros. So it doesn't mean that we have to get a deal done before the 14th of June. It gives us a bit more time to negotiate and to talk with his representatives. And it gives Blanc, Wilcox, and then Barada when he comes in after the Euros anyway. Time to actually sit down with these players. But Ratcliffe, Brailsford, and Ineos, there is going to be a shift in transfer policy this season. All right? We're going to be going for younger signings. And it wouldn't surprise me if we go after quite a few players from the Premier League to try and minimise the risk of players adapting. That's just, that's not an in the know. That's just 
it's kind of what I think. Remember at the very start that we were linked with, uh, well, not linked, but at the very, very start with uh, Brailsford and Ratcliffe, we hear that they're going to be moving towards a more homegrown policy, buying the best of British. When United were at their absolute peak, that's what we did. We bought the best that the Premier League had and the best from European, and not just best of global talents, and we combine the two with players coming through the academy. Now, what do you think about Elise, right? I did this uh, little poll on the community tab a while ago. I said, look, would you want to take him on? So I'm going to read some of the comments out down here. <laughs> Matt Richards saying, no, not with our medical department. Harrick saying, too expensive and too injury prone, which I think is unfair. I don't think he's injury prone, but he certainly had injuries this season. Doesn't mean he's injury prone, though. Can we please try and give Ahmad more minutes? Well, he's had some since then. Injury issues, big fan, no way injury prone to the max. So you can see there's a lot more comments here, by the way. A lot more comments. And it's a massive split between yes and no. And I think a fair point that's being raised here is, well, if you're going to look at Michael Elise, why wouldn't you look at Nico Williams? Nico Williams has got a 50 million euros release clause, confirmed by Fabrizio Romano, and this has been known for a while now. So what's that, about 43 million pounds? And if Elise is going to cost in the region of 60, well, you can do the maths, right? Let's have a quick look at his output, right? His output here, 97th percentile for assists, not really a goal scorer himself, but in terms of carrying the ball, in terms of dribbling past players and receiving the ball in progressive situations, that's what Nico Williams is good at. And this here is a comparison graph of Williams versus Elise. And you can see that Elise is pretty dominant, right? In pretty much everything apart from dribbling, progressive carries and take-ons. That's where Nico Williams has got the edge on him. Who would you rather have if you could choose? Would you choose Nico Williams for what is it? Around about 43 million, uh, by, by the sound of it, a straight up release clause. Or would you choose Michael Elise, who does have the Premier League experience, who has the injuries this season? It's going to be an interesting debate, this one. But I think what's for certain going to be happening under uh, Ratcliffe, I think we're going to be signing a creative winger, somebody who's going to be able to feed Rasmus Hoyland. That's a profile we don't, you could say Ahmad's probably the closest profile we've got who's, who's capable of doing that on the regular. And finally, he's getting minutes ahead of Anthony. But we need someone, whether it is, as I said, whether it's Nico Williams, whether it's Michael Elise, or whether it's somebody else. What Manchester United need this summer is somebody whose creative output on the wings is just as impressive as Bruno Fernandes' creative output is from the middle. And right now we don't have that in this team. So we need to sign one. That's the full story of where the Elise to United rumours are right now. I'll bring you updates and, uh, because this strikes me as one transfer that's really going to develop this season. This season, this summer. That's why I've done this video. You can let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you do drop a like on the video and subscribe. There's going to be a lot of transfer content here on United People's TV this summer.